And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, Curse of Beaton Hall. Come on, Susan. It's this way. I'm sure of it. Charlie, we've been walking in circles for an hour. How can we be lost inside the manor house? Sweetheart, it's very late. We're not lost, we're just... (laughs) Charlie, what was that? It's nothing. It must be one of the other guests. I think it came from over here. Then I'm going back the way we came. But Susan, the guest wing must be back in this direction. (laughs) I don't care. I'm getting out of here. Charlie! Charlie, come here. What is it? This wall. It wasn't here before. Don't be ridiculous, Angel. I'm telling you, we walked past that painting as we came out of the hallway. That's why we can't find our way back out of the room. Charlie, the walls are moving around us. Sweetheart, that's ridiculous. How could that be? Who would do a thing like that? (laughs) Charlie, I'm afraid. Those other guests, the ones who died... Those were just accidents, Susan. The papers said so. We'd have never come here otherwise. But what if they're right, Charlie? What if beaten men are cursed? Don't be ridiculous. Come on, this way. Susan, look at this. The door! It opens onto nothing! I'm sure we just came through here. Why would a door open onto a solid wall? I told you, Charlie, the walls are moving! Come on, through here! Oh, another solid wall! There's no way out! <laughs> Charlie, I'm afraid! Don't be afraid, sweetheart. I'm sure this is all a joke in very bad taste. Let's just sit here, by this fireplace, and wait until morning. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't panic. Let's just wait for morning. We'll check out... And go back to the city. Well, all right. What was that? Oh, John! The room! (coughs) It's filling with smoke! (coughs) The flu swung shut! (coughs) I can't shift it! Charlie! Oh, Charlie, I can't! I can't breathe! Susan! (coughs) Susan! Did you see this item in the newspaper, Kit? Uh, sorry, boss. I make a point of not reading the paper and driving the car at the same time. Seems two more guests have died under mysterious circumstances at Beaton Hall. Beaton Hall? Hey, you mean that resort with a curse on it? That's what the papers say, and it's seeming more plausible all the time. So, uh, what happened? Seems a young couple died while sitting by one of the fireplaces in a disused wing of the house. They were found having asphyxiated... Smoke inhalation. Oh, that's terrible. What's even more strange is that inspectors found the chimney and flue to be in perfect working order. Windows nearby were open, and the flow of air should have made such a thing impossible. It says, uh, police are baffled at this time. Hmm. I know what that usually means. Normally, Kit, I'd be inclined to agree. It sounds like a job for the red panda and the flying squirrel, but it is outside our normal sphere of influence. Isn't it just a couple hours' drive north of the city? (laughs) It's not like cottage country is someone else's territory. True enough. But Beaton Hall is an old family estate that's been converted into a resort hotel. There's a dearth of tall buildings to swing down from in the area. So we check in as millionaire playboy and trusty chauffeur. Big deal. You know how I feel about getting our secret identities mixed up in the Red Panda's cases. And I can't very well pretend to be some other wealthy young gadabout with a lady driver. Besides, Beaton Hall isn't that exclusive. We'd stand out far too much. (laughs) This from a fellow that races over rooftops in a bright red mask. So, what do we do? Stay out of it? No, but we'll need a more appropriate cover. Perhaps his man and wife. (laughs) 
Kit, you almost hit that lamppost. Uh, sorry, boss. Uh, he ran uh, right out in front of me. Uh, what, uh, what, what was that last thing you just said? I was saying that if we pretended to be a young married couple and checked into Beaton Hall, we might find just exactly what we're looking for. I couldn't have said it better myself. <sighs> Smell that fresh country air, Kit. Isn't it invigorating? I need all the invigoration I can get after that car ride. How come you had to drive? Because nondescript young husbands don't sit in the back seat and have their wives drive them around. Right. Right. I'll get the bags. No, they'll send someone out for the luggage. <sighs> For the next few days, you are not Kit Baxter. You are Jane Morris, and I am John Morris, and we are newlyweds, right? Yes, boss. And don't call me boss. Well, what should I call you? What did your mother call your father? You want me to call you Fathead? No. No, I don't. What are you doing? I'm holding out my arm for you to take. Try to look like we've done this before. Yes, but I mean, darling. That's better. <sighs> Are you feeling all right, dear? You look a little flushed. Yes. Well, no. I'm fine. Good day, and welcome to Beaton Hall, Mr. and Mrs... Uh, Morris. John Morris. Ah, uh, yes. Our honeymooners. Huh. That's right. Marvelous. Now, I'm pleased to report that the bridal suite is available after all. The bridal... Uh, yes, we've had one or two cancellations due to unfortunate... Events, I'm sure you've heard tell. Oh, yes. But John and I aren't worried about any silly superstitions. Are we, darling? Hmm? Oh, no, no. No, we're just delighted you had space for us at the last minute, mister. R forgive me. Roger Beaton, at your service. Hmm, of Beaton Hall, no less. Indeed. Beaton Hall is an old family property. Did you, uh, grow up here? Oh, my, no. Uh, mother and I traveled a good deal, and then I was educated abroad. But the last few years were as difficult for the Beatons as they were for many others. When my father passed away, this country estate was all that was left of the family fortune. Oh, how dreadful. Not at all, Mrs. Morris. <laughs> ah, Coleman! Uh, fetch our guests' bags from their car. Immediately, sir. As I was saying... As the last of the Beatons, it's been my great pleasure to convert this old home into a fine resort hotel. I'm only sorry that a run of, of very bad luck seems to have dogged us thus far. I hope you find your stay pleasant. Coleman will be back in a moment. He'll show you to your room. We'll see you both for dinner. Yes, dinner. Of course. Thank you. You okay, Moss? You went white as a sheet when he said... Honeymoon. Don't be ridiculous. This way, please. Ah, thank you. Uh, Coleman, was it? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. This certainly is a beautiful building. Must have been quite a thing to see in happier times. Indeed it was, sir. I meant when it was the Beaton family estate. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I assumed you had been hired since the resort opened. For the rest of the staff, that is true, sir. I have been with the family for many years. But you're so young. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. My parents worked for old Mr. Beaton. I was raised within these very walls, sir. In time, the Beaton family took charge of my schooling, and I have held a position in this house since I came of age. I owe the Beatons everything. It must be difficult to see such hard times. Surely a number of guests have stayed away since the curse began to manifest itself? Indeed, sir. But people are remarkably resilient. They will return, just as you both have. Here is your room, sir. I'll bring the bags in and hold the door for you. Ah, thank you. Surely you... you wish to carry the lady over the threshold? With that? Oh, yes, of course. How silly of me. Up we go, dear. Whoop. Very good, sir. Please just ring if there's anything you require. Uh, hi. Hello. Maybe you should uh, put me down now. I was... Just about to do that. <sighs> wow. It's a very nice... Uh, uh, room. I, um... Yeah... Think they'd suspect something if we asked for a bridal suite with twin beds? Not to worry. I'm sure there's a sofa here in the sitting room. 
Any luck? Two chairs and a love seat. I can sleep in a chair. No, no. You take this room. I'll be fine. Are you sure? You should be comfortable on your wedding night. John Morris, behave yourself. Uh, yes, boss. Can I help you with something, Mr. Morris? What's that? Oh, hello, Mr. Beaton. Uh, no, I was just looking at the fireplace here in this little sitting room. I was wondering if it was the same one... I'm afraid it is, Mr. Morse. This is the spot where that unfortunate young couple was found. Indeed. I was just examining... Uh, forgive me, Mr. Morse, but this wing of the house is not really open to guests. I'm sorry. I didn't see any harm. No, indeed. I'm sure you can appreciate that we'd rather not dwell on a few unfortunate incidents too much. We're hoping in the fullness of time to open the entire estate to our guests. But for the moment, we are starting small. I must ask you to move along, sir. I believe your wife is outside at the tennis courts? My... W yes. Yes, of course. Sorry to have disturbed you. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. How's the tennis coming? I'm undefeated. Of course, that might mean a little more if I had anyone to play with beyond a few little old ladies. Quite. Not that you don't deserve a vacation, Kit, but you haven't forgotten why we're here, have you? Oh, Red Panda, we've been here four days with no sign of trouble. We've talked to all of the few remaining guests. The staff don't want to talk about the accidents. Maybe there's nothing here to uncover. I don't think so. I've just had an odd conversation with Roger Beaton... He seemed a little nervous about my poking about that fireplace. Well, maybe he's just worried about the place becoming a hot spot for gawkers. After all, he must have used what little money he had left to convert the estate into a resort. If the guests don't start coming back soon, he could lose the whole place. Maybe you're right. And everything does seem quiet. Someone could be on to our cover. It's entirely possible. What do you mean? Oh, my dowager tennis chums have observed that my new husband never kisses me in public. They have? I tried to tell them you were just shy, but they seem suspicious. They could be watching right now. Mm, no, I don't see anyone. Oh. I appreciate the alternate theory, Kit, but there is a mystery here. I feel it in my bones. Well, maybe you're just stiff from sleeping in a chair. Quite. I think I could do with a little exercise. Anyone for tennis? Not exactly what I had in mind. Unpack the masks. Tonight after dark, the red panda springs into action. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Feels good to get the old cowl on again. I was starting to feel rusty. Not too rusty to pick that window lock, I hope. It's long done. I was waiting for you to finish admiring the scenery. What scenery? How about your darling wife in a cat suit and squirrel mask? You're enjoying this undercover assignment too much. <laughs> no, I'm enjoying your massive discomfort too much. <laughs> Open the window. Yes, boss. Explain to me again why we're sneaking into the disused wing of the manor from the outside. Because it might be a little obvious to stroll down from our room in full costume. Gotcha. Wow! Will you look at this setup? This ballroom is enormous. I can see why Roger Beaton wants to expand his operation. Or does he? We've been assuming that the things he told us were true. If he's behind these accidents, there must be something in the financial arrangements we don't know about. Something that would make him want to drive his own resort out of business? Possibly. We should check his father's will, too. There might be something there. Do I smell a safe-cracking job? Maybe. Let's see how we make out tonight. Hmm. Look at these paintings. Mm -hmm. Morton Beaton. Hmm. From the dates, it must be Roger Beaton's grandfather. Yes. And here's Roger Beaton Sr. There's something about this picture. 
Something I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe it's the handlebar moustache. Squirrel, that's it. I was kidding. I'm not. Look at this painting of Roger Beaton's father and picture him without his mustache. Red Panda! Well, what can it mean? I'm not sure, Squirrel. I want to get a better look at that fireplace. It must be through that door. Follow me. Why would a door open to a solid wall? Strange. Try this one. This one, too. They're all blocked off. But these walls behind the doors, they match the walls in the hallway. And this one matches the walls in the music room. I think I'm starting to understand. I understand that someone is trying to keep us in this spot. Red Panda, look out! The chandelier is going to fall! (coughs) (coughs) Ah, Squirrel, are you all right? I'm fine. That was a little too close to be an accident. This was no accident. Look at this rope. It's been cut. Up there! A man on the catwalk. Thinks he can get away from us through the upper windows, does he? Come on, Squirrel, use your static shoes. Let's get after him. You went out that window. My mother always told me there'd be days like this. When you'd be running up sheer surfaces after a murderer? No, when my husband would have me climb in the walls. Out the window, come on. Where did he go? There, heading for the hedge maze. Last one to the ground doesn't have retractable gliding membranes. What? Well, how'd you get down here before me? And they say there's no mystery left in our marriage. Come on. He's in the hedge maze. Where is he? This way. Uh, Now where? Footprint. Come on. Dead end. (laughs) Not laugh. Over here. (laughs) It's over here now. This way. It's changed direction again. Wait. The last laugh we heard was from over here. I'm sure of it. Aha. A hidden dictaphone. The evil laugh we hear is a recording. It must be in sequence with other dictaphones throughout the maze. That's right. They're placed to drive us further into the maze while our unseen friend doubles back and makes it to safety. Very clever. It sure is. Now, how do we get out of this maze? There's nothing to throw a grapple to, our static shoes won't climb this loose surface, and I can't glide without a head start from Mr. Gravity. Did I never tell you how to find your way out of any maze? You're a negligent husband. I'm ignoring that. (laughs) All you do is put one hand on a wall of the maze and walk. Keep that same hand on the wall without taking it off, and eventually you'll come to the exit. Eventually. I didn't say it took you by the most direct route. I just said it takes you out. Swell. Some hyena drops a chandelier on our heads and we're taking a midnight stroll in a hedge maze. The evening's not a total loss. I think we're starting to see the whole picture. When we get out of here, I want to pay a call on Roger Beaton's study. The contents of his safe might just give us the clues we need to solve this little game of murder. Oh, hello, Coleman. How are you this afternoon? Not at all well, Mrs. Morris. I'm afraid a number of guests have checked out early today. Checked out early? Whatever for? It seems that late last night, a chandelier fell in the great ballroom. Together with the other recent accidents, I'm afraid that these growing legends of the curse of Beaton Hall have proved too much for many. That's awful. Was anyone hurt? Apparently not. It seems that none of our guests were anywhere near that wing of the manor when it happened. Well, that's a relief. Quite. At the same time, it does give one pause. How do you mean? The Beaton family history is not a happy one, Mrs. Morris. Perhaps there is more to this curse than meets the eye. Oh, Coleman, how can you say that? You grew up in this house. Was it always cursed? It did not always seem so, madam. But unhappy events have dogged the Beaton family for many years. It now seems foolish for outsiders to involve themselves in that unhappiness. Perhaps you and Mr. Morris will wish to reconsider your stay as well? Yes, perhaps you're right. I should talk to my husband. Thank you, Coleman. Not at all. Good day, Mrs. Morris. Soon they will all be gone, and that masked menace will have come up from the city for nothing. 
A few more months in Beaton Hall will be mine. Just as it should be, eh, Coleman? The Red Panda! I'll fix you. No, no. There's no need for the hardware, is there? You're breaking my arm. And I will if you don't drop that gun. That's better. It was all you, wasn't it, Coleman? Roger Beaton traveled the world, grew up abroad. The rest of the staff was replaced when the resort was opened. Not you. You grew up in this house. Your mother may have been a servant here, but one only needs to see that portrait gallery to know who your father was. Roger Beaton Sr. That's right. I was his son. More his son than that spoiled brat Beaton would ever be. He raised me, loved me, but he could never acknowledge me. He left me a small legacy, but this place, my home, left to that wastrel. And what did he do? Turned it into a resort, brought in crowds of outsiders, wasted the last nickels our father left him turning this house into a ridiculous holiday camp. But you were waiting for your revenge, weren't you, Coleman? The legacy he left you was enough that you would never need to work again. Don't bother to deny it. I've seen the will. My father's will? That's right. Along with the financial statements for Beaton Hall... If business continued to stay away from this cursed estate, Roger Beaton would have been forced to sell just to pay off his debt. He'd have been penniless. And according to the terms of the will, he would have been forced to sell it to a Beaton if one wished to buy it. Roger might think he's the last of the Beatons, but you'd produce evidence to the contrary, wouldn't you? You have it right here in your quarters, don't you? You can't prove any of this. I think I can, Coleman. You grew up in this house. You knew about the sliding walls in the north wing. You'd have played with them as a boy. Yes. You knew where the alternate control for that chimney flue was. Yes. And you might be the only person in the world who knows that hedge maze well enough to run in at top speed in the middle of the night and run out again without getting lost. Very clever, Red Panda. But you'll never take me. Coleman, put down that revolver. Not this time, Red Panda. I'd rather die here in my home. Coleman! <laughs> Well, now that the mystery of the curse has been solved, I'm sure guests will come back to Beaton Hall. I hope so, Kit. Roger Beaton is trying to make a new life for the Beatons here. I wish him well in the attempt. So, uh, the police found enough evidence in Coleman's room to tie him to the murders? That's right. Architectural drawings of the house showing the features he later used in his crimes, along with documentation of his parentage. Sad, really. Very. Too bad some people have such old-fashioned ideas of class distinction that it spoils their happiness, and that of others. Certainly is, Kit. Well, back to the city, I suppose. Hmm. What's wrong? Well, well, won't it seem odd that Mr. and Mrs. Morris are cutting the honeymoon short after the mystery has been solved? I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, after all, we wouldn't want to arouse suspicion and compromise our secret identities. No, I suppose not. Not for the sake of two days. Two days of swimming, tennis, horseback riding. I see. Dining, dancing. Dancing? And would it kill you? No, but another two nights sleeping in that chair just might. Well, Mr. Morris, I'm sure we could come to some arrangement... Kit? That's right. If you behave yourself, I just might let you sleep in the bathtub. <laughs> and so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 8, Curse of Beaton Hall, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Jonathan Lear, Shannon Arnold, Peter Nichols, Stephen Burley, Clarissa Denetterlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>